Super Frankie Lampard has spoken. Right, what's going on you lot? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. Welcome to today's video, which is talking about what Frank Lampard has come out and said about Chelsea's January transfer business. Lampard has said a lot of stern things with questions that have been posed to him in his press conference about transfers and players coming in and going out. My recent Chelsea news videos, you know how it goes, I read the headlines of Chelsea news, rumours generally, but a lot of the time, agent talks, I consolidate the news and present it to you guys with my opinion. Some of it turns out to be true, some of it doesn't, but this is what's really interesting because in this video, I'm going to talk about Frank Lampard's response to each, well not each, but certain stories that were posed to him. Stern but fair, Frank Lampard. Before we get into the video, if you haven't done so, make sure you do subscribe to Football Therapy and click the bell notifications icon, that's important. Why not like the video, support your homie Yan. Oh yeah, also I'll plug it now. Go subscribe to my second channel, which has been rebranded Yan's Yard. A more informal, chilled out channel that's not just about football. <laughs> Click on the link at the top of the description. It took me a few times to say that to go subscribe to Yan's Yard. Right then, let's get into this video. So, Lampard, I've got to use my phone here because he said a lot of stuff and I want to talk about what he said. Right. Moussa Dembele, heavily, heavily linked to Chelsea in the media through all sorts of news outlets, you know, whether it's Sky Sports or... I was going to say less reputable, but at the moment, how reputable is Sky Sports? Do you know what I mean? So he was asked in his presser about Moussa Dembele, and he was a little bit surprised to say, yes, I know who this striker is. He's on my radar. But I'm really, really surprised to see all these links in the media. It's something, he loosely said something like that. He basically said he's kind of lightly on my radar, but we haven't really spoken about him. So to hear and see all these really, really strong links is kind of baffling for him because he hasn't really talked about him with you know the board and the club and those discussions with Lampard essentially are going to dictate who Chelsea go in for in the market so he was like yeah I know about him you know maybe he's come up once or something but generally we're not looking at him so what the hell is all this I think he probably thinks the media is overcooking it who knew anyway so that's interesting it pretty much indicated Frank Lampard probably very lightly has him in the back of his mind but generally hasn't made an approach and they're not thinking of bringing him in this January which I find quite interesting also at this point in the video I do want to caveat this with Frank Lampard's incredibly intelligent will inherently keep his cards close to his chest and you know sort of wave away stories if he thinks it's not in the interest of the club or the club's desire to purchase a player. Just wanted to offer that disclaimer. Right, so let's move on to the next story that was posed to the Chelsea coach. Just get my phone out again. Right, the next one's pretty darn interesting. Olivier Giroud. Obviously, everyone knows that Giroud's representatives have been meeting with Inter's representatives in Italy, um, you know, and a couple of more. At first, Lampard's stance and it was pretty firm. He was like, look guys, I'll say what I said before. Giroud's been a really, really professional character throughout. He will only leave the club if it suits us as a club. Da, 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 da. But throughout this exchange with the journalist, he became a little bit more sheepish. I think Lampard sort of accepted that everyone knows Giroud wants to get out. Didier Deschamps wants him to get out. His agents have been talking to other clubs because they're allowed to legally anyway because he's only got six months left in this contract. So towards the end of this exchange, he was like, look, we all know what's going on because you sort of know, yes, there might be discussions, but we won't necessarily let him go. And then more interestingly, Frank Lampard's stance has apparently changed on one thing. He says, look, we maintain the same idea of he only goes if it's good for the club and he's been a professional. But Lampard kind of used to indicate he'd only go if we could get a replacement in. And further to the story of him waving away ideas of Moussa Dembele, when he was asked at the end of this exchange, does him exiting the club, is it reliant, reliant on you getting a replacement? And he said no. So Lampard's gone from, yeah, we'll let Oli G go if we get a replacement to, Maybe we just let him go if we make a few million as he needs to go and we don't get a replacement. Interesting how things have changed there. Bearing in mind also though, he probably does back Michi to get some form again. Also as well, he's found, um, he played Pulisic in the false nine. Maybe that's something in the future he'll be considering to do or just generally find different alternatives up front. Who knows? But that's interesting how suddenly he's changed his tune on Oli G. Speaking of Pulisic, we might as well move on to the next story with him. He uh, has injured his abductor tendon 
the, just before the Nottingham Forest game. Apparently he was in a lot of pain, which sounded quite unpleasant the way Lampard described it, and he'll be out for five weeks, so no false nine from Pulisic in the next five weeks. Also, yeah, it's kind of disappointing because he's been a really, really good player for Chelsea this season. Uh, fortunately for Chelsea, hudson Adore had a really good game against Forest and looking a little bit more pokey, so he'll have to come into the starting lineup with Willian, but with a potential exit of Pedro in January as well, Chelsea could be left pretty darn sure on the wings. Hmm. Hopefully he won't be out for that long and he can come back as well as other injured players who can come back and chip in with goals. So moving on to the next story, Ruben Loftus-Cheek. So Ruben's a huge miss for Chelsea since he got injured. He was absolutely fantastic under Maurizio Sarri. He looked like an absolute beast in the left centre mid role, scoring goals, getting assists, bodying people off the ball, progressing the ball up the pitch with his muscular retaining possession skills. Um, he's been doing good fitness training now. He's obviously posted on social media of him running up and down doing technical training with the ball. Lampard has always maintained in recent press conferences that he's way off returning to the first team, which he did indeed again in this press conference, but he did say that he's going to start putting Ruben Loftus-Cheek in football matches, so like academy football matches, under 23s, whatever. Something so he gets a feel for the game again, playing the game, but just because he's at the level of you know, being reintegrated into youth teams, it means he's still so, so far off the first team, as Lampard's um, requirements of quality of being in the first team is very, very high. He's one of those old school guys that are all about fitness, match fitness, match sharpness, and even if Ruben Loftus-Cheek's injury is over, he's so, so far off being that level and sort of being reintegrated into the first team. Think about Antonio Rudiger. He was fit for a while, but took ages until Lampard says, okay, now you can play in a match. So even though it's really, really good news, Ruben Loftus-Cheek's, is on the right path, it would still be probably weeks, maybe months, probably a return at the end of the Premier League season. But still, he might come back into the side when Chelsea need him most. People forget how positive he is. And even if he comes in, I don't know, March, March, April, say late March, it will be like a new signing. As much as I hate that terminology, Ruben Loftus-Cheek's inclusion will be superb. Chelsea do not need to buy another midfielder. That's one thing throughout these rumours and the rags that I really didn't buy for a second that Chelsea were going to get for a conventional centre mid. I was all up for players like Isco, players that can play between the lines, because Lampard himself says that's something Chelsea need to do more, and if they can bring in someone of great quality... Because he also says replacing Eden Hazard. We never replaced Eden Hazard. Someone that is like Isco, as an example can be that players to play between the lines and score against low blocks at Stamford Bridge. Right then, for the final story that I want to talk about today is Andreas Christensen, because obviously he's been the fourth choice centre-back at Chelsea. Let's not beat around the bush, he has been. Um, everyone recognises Andreas Christensen as a very talented footballer ever since he played under Conte. You know, he went on loan to Germany to Borussia Mönchengladbach, was very good, played at centre-back, midfield, uh, technical footballer, good good cerebral lucid footballer a lot of people are concerned about his physicality and getting bodied off the ball but generally of late he's been seen as the fourth choice center back so he's been recently linked with a move away as he has done in the past and the latest is ac milan now a lot of news outlets and publications have been reporting this and when frank lampard was asked about this in his press conference today he put in an unequivocal stern no he basically said, no way, Christensen isn't leaving, all the January stories about him linked with an exit are nonsense, which is interesting. So Chelsea buying a centre-back for 40 million, whether it be Ake or another one, kind of like dies down a little bit because how many centre-backs do Chelsea want? They generally play a two centre-back system. They've got four decent centre-backs. Are they going to buy one if they don't let one go? Probably not. But Frank Lampard goes on to say some really, really positive things about Andreas Christensen. He really, really likes him. He rates him very, very highly. He was, like I said, very stern in saying how he wants to keep him, but he wants more out of him. He wants to squeeze out this talent and ability. He said, explained how, when he played for Chelsea, he trained with Christensen. You know, he saw this kid. He knows he's very, very good. He knows he's very talented, and he probably knows where his ceiling is and doesn't want to lose that quality of player, but won't play him in his first team until he's playing at the level he is happy with. So that's another one Frank Lampard has thrown water over saying, nah, nonsense. And finally, he was posed the question, Lampard, 
<laughs> I don't think he says Lampard. Maybe Frank. Lampard, what's happening, mate? Frank. What's happening in the market? Are you close to anything? And he said no. I think he also explained how it's early doors in the window, but Chelsea have always maintained this very stern stance of we will buy if it makes the squad stronger. But the fact is, if Chelsea are selling players like Olivier Giroud, maybe Pedro, they might have to bring in some cover. And I think deep down, no matter what Frank Lampard says to save face and you know represent the club well in press conferences, I don't think he will want to be left short. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens. I mean, Chelsea have always notoriously bought incredibly late in a lot of windows. They wait to sometimes deadline day and buy one or two players like Louise and Alonso under Conte. And it's happened a bunch of times. So it'll be interesting to see what happens, but it's very interesting to, uh, to see and hear what Frank Lampard said about all this. Anyway, guys, let me know your comments and uh, thoughts in the comments section below. If you've enjoyed the content today, please do like the video. Remember, go subscribe to Yan's Yard. Yan's Yard, that's the name of the second channel now. I better try and remember it. I'm gonna do a video on that later. So go check out Yan's Yard. Link in the top of the description. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, guys. You lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.